It's a tale as old as time. A mother and father will take their smiling, happy pair of children to the movies. The kids will have a great time and so will the parents, but for slightly different reasons. Those jokes your parents laughed at might not have been so funny to you back then, but they will be now. Today at Screen Rant, we're going to be looking back at 10 Disney jokes that get funnier as adults. Let us know what your favorites are, and remember to push that red button to subscribe for more. And before we begin, can you name the film from these emojis? Stay tuned until the end of the video for the big reveal. Okay, talk to the back. Moana. It's undeniable that wrestling was huge in the mid to late 90s. It was the height of the Attitude Era. It was cool to like pro wrestling again. At the height of all this pro wrestling mayhem was a man named Dwayne Johnson, also known as The Rock. This was a guy who was relatively unpopular at first, with ham-fisted promos and seemingly lacking the X Factor needed to be a star. But then everything changed. One day The Rock became a powerhouse of charisma, the most electrifying man in sports entertainment one of, if not the greatest mic worker of all time. The Rock became a star so great that he transcended wrestling itself, something that only Hulk Hogan had successfully done before. Why is this relevant to Moana? Well, it seems that the movie's animators were fond of The Rock too, as his character Maui performs the People's Eyebrow, the signature look The Rock would give to drive fans wild. It's not crude or inappropriate, but it's a joke that young children probably aren't going to get. While the kids may laugh at Maui pulling a funny face, adult wrestling fans who remember the heyday of The Rock will be in hysterics that this cartoon character just pulled Dwayne Johnson's signature expression. You mean limitations on wishes? <laughs> Some all-powerful genie can't even bring people back from the dead. Aladdin and the King of Thieves. We are also including straight-to-video movies too. While they technically have more to do with the animated series than the original movies, Aladdin's direct-to-video sequels fare a little better than most other Disney movies, by virtue of actually making some sense. Robin Williams initially left the franchise due to legal disagreements with Disney, leaving him absent from the second movie and animated TV show. He was replaced by the longtime voice of Homer Simpson, Dan Castellaneta. But when the time came for the third, final installment of the Aladdin saga, Williams returned. And man, are we glad he did it, because without him, we probably wouldn't have gotten this quick little joke. During the scene at Aladdin's wedding, the ground unexpectedly shakes thanks to an elephant stampede. Needless to say, everyone panics, except for the genie, who lets this cracking one-liner rip. I thought the earth wasn't supposed to move until the honeymoon. It's that kind of witty one-liner that made us love Robin Williams as the genie, who was the source for most of the more adult comedy in the original movie. Cars Cars is one of the stranger entries in the Pixar canon. Apart from being the only one that couldn't hypothetically take place in the same universe, it has a wildly different tone as well. It's perhaps most similar to Bugs Life in how it creates a culture and world to a bunch of characters which realistically wouldn't have one. It also takes advantage of its car world to make quite a few more adult jokes. You really need us the sweet taste of my homemade organic fuel. <laughs> no, doesn't agree with my tank. They don't all stay quite that innocent, though. After all, Lightning McQueen is a bona fide celebrity race car, and as such, he has his own share of groupies. Like these two female cars, which flash their headlights at him. Yeah, that's right, Lightning McQueen gets flashed by two women. There's also a place to go with convertible waitresses. We all know that a convertible is a cool sports car where the roof comes off, allowing you to speed down the road, wind blowing through your hair. So this is a place where cars go to see other cars take their tops off. All right, Pixar, you're really starting to push it with this one. Hello, everyone. Muppets Treasure Island. The Muppets can seemingly be put anywhere and still somehow make sense. This was certainly the case with the 1996 classic Muppets Treasure Island, which takes the classic Muppet characters and the classic literature characters and makes them kiss. Quite literally. When Miss Piggy and Kermit are talking, Kermit is horrified to learn that his porky on-again, off-again girlfriend has been in a relationship with Captain Flint. When he asks why, she replies, Well, he was a pirate, I was a lady, you know the story. Needless to say, Kermit is not too happy with this little revelation. It's made funnier when the burning ball of manliness that is Tim Curry first struts onto the screen as the famous pirate Long John Silver. Miss Piggy greets him with a, Hello. Oh no, him too? Hey, it's Tim Curry, so I mean, can we blame her? 
One of the great hallmarks of the Muppets is their innate ability to fit in some very mature jokes, and sometimes even have a flat-out adult TV show that can still somehow go unnoticed by kids. It's why they've endured for so many years and why they will continue to do so in many TV shows and movies to come. You smash the entire area, you kill anything that has more than two legs, you get me? We get you, sir! Starship Troopers Thanks to Disney being the giant mega corporation it is, it also owns companies and distributors like Miramax and Touchstone. This means that films like The Sixth Sense, Pulp Fiction, Reign of Fire, and even the legendary Apocalypto are all technically Disney properties. While these aren't normally the sort of movies that you'd watch as a kid, Starship Troopers definitely was one of them. Starship Troopers was interesting. It was a cool sci-fi war satire that we really shouldn't have been watching as kids, yet we all did anyway which meant that a lot of, if not all of that humor, really sailed right over our heads. Revisiting the film as an adult, and now a member of its intended audience, you can really appreciate how funny Starship Troopers actually was. Good for you. Mobile infantry made me the man I am today. While the movie was panned on release as mindless drivel, the film was actually intended as a satire of war and American imperialism, and it does so by sending thousands of soldiers out as cannon fodder, with countless men dying only to return with their reward be to go to war again. The movies intentionally mocks military propaganda. Everyone's doing their part. Are you? The war effort needs your effort. At work, at home, in your community. <laughs> And when you're a child, it's just cool to see the bugs blow up. But when you're an adult, you can really appreciate the joke a little bit more. And then there was Achilles. Now there was a guy who had it all. The build, the foot speed. He could jab. He could take a hit. He could keep on coming. But that for slug in a heel is. He barely gets nicked there once and kaboom. He's history. Hercules. Directors Clemens and Musker have worked on some of the best Disney films. Treasure Planet, The Little Mermaid, The Princess and the Frog, but the one with the smartest humor has to be Hercules. With so many historical and mythological gags that soar over the heads of children and even some adults. Like when Hermes tells Zeus that, I haven't seen this much love in a room since Narcissus discovered himself. <clears throat> Narcissus being the hunter from Greek mythology who was known for falling in love with his own reflection. When Hercules later tries to get trained by Phil, the grumpy satyr blows him off by saying, God, Two words. I am retired. This puzzles Hercules, but it's also a great language joke, as I am retired, when translated into Greek, is only two words. And that's not the only way out there joke. Later in the movie, Hercules references seeing the play Oedipus and remarking, Man, I thought I had problems. <laughs> uh. Oedipus, of course, being the Greek play in which a guy kills his father and then has children with his own mother. Ugh. Greek mythology is full of debauchery and inappropriate content, so it only made sense that directors Clemens and Musker would play around with it. Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy character Peter Quill is known as a bit of a roguish young man. It was pretty common for him to take numerous space women back to his ship after a hard day's pirating. So much so, in fact, he says, Find a black light? The place would look like a Jackson Pollock painting. In order to understand this joke, you need to be at least over the age of 12, hopefully. You also have to understand what a black light does, and then live in the knowledge that this is what a Jackson Pollock painting looks like. So, yeah, that's pretty gross. James Gunn actually spent some extra time reshooting just so that he could insert a joke, which was not in the script. While he and actor Chris Pratt were certainly down for it, a lot of the crew on set just didn't see what the point was. They were so certain that Marvel Studios, owned by Disney, wouldn't allow such a rude joke into a House of Mouse property. Ultimately, though, it turned out Gunn and Pratt were right, and the little joke made it through unscathed. Maybe the Disney execs just didn't get the joke. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End We're not going to pretend the Pirates of the Caribbean sequels are great, but we do have to give them credit to going to such an extreme length to cast Rolling Stones guitarist and rock legend Keith Richards in the role of Captain T, just for the sake of a joke. When first developing the role of Captain Jack Sparrow, Johnny Depp, who was a big rock fan and musician himself, modeled his mannerisms off of the British rock star. Depp's reasoning was that pirates were the rock stars of their day. We're not saying the logic wasn't faulty, but his pseudo Richards impression became iconic with the character. As a result, when the time came to cast Jack Sparrow's dad, who better to cast than Keith Richards himself? As from a certain point of view, Keith actually is Jack Sparrow's dad. 
Keith swaggers around the set, really just being himself, yet he carries himself in such a way he's really believable in the role, which is impressive for someone who's not really an actor. Of course, we can't really be too mad at young kids for not knowing who Keith Richards is. We didn't either. Still, when you grow up, it's pretty funny, and hopefully it'll introduce some young people to some older music they may take too. Didn't your parents ever warn you about strangers? Yes, they did. Frozen. Frozen is Disney's most financially successful animated classic to date. It's also layered with jokes that a lot of small kids might not get. There are obvious rude jokes that will fly over children's heads. Like this conversation between Kristoff and Anna, where the two characters debate over whether it was a smart idea to get engaged to Hans, in spite of not really knowing him. The duo talk about things you should know about someone before you get married to them, such as their last name, favorite food, eye color, and foot size. What's his favorite food? Sandwiches. Best friend's name? Probably John. Eye color. Dreamy. Foot size? Foot size doesn't matter. In a fun little double entendre that you'll probably miss unless you're one screwed up kid. Of course, Anna doesn't think that foot size matters, but foot size can also mean something else. Big shoes. That's not all, though. Frozen references writer Hans Christian Andersen, who penned the tale of the Snow Queen. How did they do it? Well, there's a clever little joke hidden in the characters' names. Hans, Kristoff, Anna, Sven. Each of the characters were specifically named to play off of Hans Christian Andersen. That's pretty cool, huh? Is this you? Oh, now they're just being mean. Tangled. Next up is Frozen's unofficial rival. For some reason, in spite of them both coming from the same company, a lot of Disney fans are split between Team Frozen and Team Tangled. We're not really sure why. They're similar films, sure, but it's not like one ripped the other off or anything. We're not sure if it's just our own dirty minds, but something about this poster for Tangled just doesn't seem right. It's not uncommon for Disney to put indecent things into the background of their movies or their posters. Regardless of whether it's the real-life photo of a nude woman in The Rescuers, or a simple case of mistaken identity, like The Lion King's infamous SFX message, Disney is known for these things. So when it looks like the Tangled poster looks as though it's spelling out S-E-X, we can't help but be curious. You've got to be kidding me. While it's true that the human brain is always looking for patterns and things that it recognizes, it's also true that Disney has a habit of letting these things accidentally slip into their final products. What do you think? Is it just our imagination or is this poster a little bit naughty? Maybe the connotations of being tangled have just spoiled our minds. That's all we have time for today. What are your favorites? Also, what else do you want to see us talk about here on Screen Rant? We're always open to suggestion. Be sure to leave a comment and let us know. We post videos all week, so you should really consider subscribing to us if you haven't done so already. Have a good one.